Hello, dear friends. May God bless you all. Me and Bishop Renato, we are here to share with you the body of the church. And uh, this week we spoke about the church of Ephesus. That the Lord Jesus direct his word. Let's read the text so we understand better. There says, To the angel of the church of Ephesus write, that's the Lord Jesus, These things, says he, who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. For example, if Jesus would send a letter like to the universal church, so he would direct that letter to me, but not only to me, but to all the pastors of the universal church, all the bishops, all the evangelists, all those who work in the church, those who work to bring salvation to people. So here, he specified with make it clear that's very nice this angel supposedly we believe that this angel he had what the holy spirit he was filled with the holy spirit he couldn't be an angel if he didn't have the holy spirit he's speaking to the angel and then renato he was overwhelmed by the Holy Spirit to do the work of God. Like the Lord Jesus, before he sent his disciples, the conditions for them to go and preach and to work the work of God, they needed the Holy Spirit. So this is a assumption more than right that to have the Holy Spirit, all the angels of the churches, they need the Holy Spirit. So Ephesians, the church of Ephesians, from this church, all the other six were born. You see that the church of Ephesians was a very strong church. But in the following verse, the Lord Jesus says, I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. It means the Lord Jesus first, he starts greeting the works, their patience, they wouldn't bear the evil ones, those that were liars, false apostles, they would work without getting tired, they would be tirelessly they would never be weary. The work. See that it was about the work. And they suffered. And they had patience. Not just the normal patience to be waiting for something. It is a true resilience. Perseverance. This is the kind of patience that is being taught here. That perseverance. That resilience. You insist, you work, so you had patience, and you have labored for my name's sake, and you have not become weary. Bishop Renato, say to us, we see, Bishop, that, for example, the universal church fits perfectly in this Ephesians church, as we do not stop. Everybody know that the work of the universal church is 24 hours, 7 days per week. We persevere. Sometimes we go to a place and there is uh, something against the persecution. For example, what happened in Angola? The church had been there through a thunderstorm and a trial, but we're still there persevering. Doesn't matter what. So, how many times we also bared the false, the liars? We tasted tasted the, the faith of those who say they were, but they were not. So the universal church fits 
perfectly in this text. Yes, this is perfect. You placed it, for example, we have pastors and bishops who are working in the middle of the war. Like there's a bishop working there in Israel right now. Another bishop working in the middle of the war there in Ukraine. And another one in Russia. So many other countries in Africa that are at war and the pastors are there. They are there. They are the angels. And because they are the angels, they have the warranty, the guarantee of the word of God because they are the messengers. Angel is a messenger of the Lord. So those who are messengers of God, they have the authority of God to, to do what God wants them to do. So here, the angel, he was doing marvelous wonders. But comes the next text that says, Nevertheless, I have this. This, nevertheless, is the hardest thing. Nevertheless, I have this against you. So he showed what was good. Now he shows what he has against. Against the angel of the church. You have left the first love. This is very strong. Bishop Renato. Everybody remember of the first love. I was thinking today. When we love someone, we don't see any defect in the person, the first love. Nobody can put a mistake. Somebody says bad something about him or her. We will not see. We don't see any defect. But in this case, when we talk about the spiritual first love, we have the fear. In the beginning of the church, we have that fear of God. When we convert, we are careful. Like my example, when I started to read the Bible, I, I read your book, The Footsteps of Jesus. You said, do not read the Bible laying down because you have to honor the word that you are reading. So sometimes we would be relaxed and we lay down a little bit and we would straight again because I need to honor the word. The word of God needs my whole attention. So God speaks to us and I'm not going to be sleeping here reading the Bible. So this is the small details to pray, to fast to organize our clothes in the day previous. So this is the first love, the details that counts. And counts a lot, just like in the beginning of a relationship, in the dating, everything counts. So I remember this, that the first love, the Lord Jesus was warning the angel about this life that he had before, this care, this fear, those thoughts with the words, we observe everything in the very beginning. But with time, what usually happens, we get relaxed. It's natural. When we stay sitting down too long in a place, we relax, our body relax. And the tendency is to relax. No one is immune to this. Not even an angel of the church. Because he had the Holy Spirit. He was the leader of the church, but even him was not immune to it. So it's something that can happen to any of us. If we do not attend, be very careful for not to become lazy spiritually, to be relaxed spiritually because of the works, to be compensating the lack of the first love. This is the tendency. A lot of works tend to to make us to be complacent because of our conquest. I've been doing a lot. I don't need to do more what I used to do before because what I do today, today is a lot. The worst is that sometimes the person looks at themselves and they say they are doing a lot because they are looking at those who are bad and they are even worse because they are looking to others. They must look at themselves. I see this first love, Bishop Renato. I speak about, my, I speak about myself. I cannot speak for others. In my first love, well, anything, the small thing that I used to do that wouldn't please God, my conscience would be painful. 
in the same time, right away, and I would look to seek forgiveness, right away, seek for forgiveness, to be right with God. In the first love, I see that the love that I have for the Lord Jesus, this love is also mirrored by the love that I have for the souls, the souls that are lost. So the love that I have for the lost people is the same love that I have towards God. Because imagine if I was called to be an angel for an institution. So this institution has to work, has to fight in the favor of the souls that are lost. If by any chance I leave this aside, say, no, it's all good. Everything is going well. On the current is moving forward. So I would be relaxing my, re my relationship with God. When we love God, we must please Him. When we love the Lord Jesus, we want to please Him because I, I offered myself, I offered my life. I wanted to take to other people what God has given me. So, when this is let it to get cold, the person starts to get cold in their faith because they already have something tangible. So, this is already leaving the first love behind. And there we can see that the Lord Jesus says, Repent and do the first works. So, He doesn't ask for more works, but He asks to go back to the first works. So we know that the last works has taken the first place. What was the first works? That one that were marked by fear, the zeal, the carefulness, details, the love for the souls. I remember as soon as I got to know about salvation, I was baptizing water and I had the knowledge about the soul going to hell or being saved. So as I surrender in the baptism in water my life, I remember that I would go to school and I would be thinking all the time, how am I going to tell my friends, my colleagues about the Lord Jesus? And I would be looking for an opportunity, like I was being the bus and I would look at the people in the bus and say, these people, if they die, how is their soul? And I would carry leaflets with me so I was very timid and I did not know how to talk to people so I would be with a leaflet and I would be looking at somebody at the bus and say before I go down the bus I'll give the leaflet for this person so then I would go down to the bus and whereas the bus was going to stop and I'll give the leaflet and say read this please this conscious of the soul around us they are a responsibility we are the watchmen. All of this, it's part of the first love. The passion for the souls. So many assistants. And many people that are working for God. Maybe you say, uh, this is not for me. No, it can fit for you too. Depending on your relationship with God. Your own communion with the Holy Spirit. Because for sure those who got cold that fell, that are fallen, that were surrounded by Satan like Peter. So those who are around, they are lost. They think, they carry inside of them the illusion. I've been doing the work of God. I'm doing the work of God. So the devil even speak to them. Oh, you are a good servant. You do this, you do the other. Look, that person. That person was bad and you helped them. So the person, when he hear that voice, the voice from Satan, of the devil, and, and he start to, to feel a certain well-being, a fake well-being, and the person many times end up being proud and boisterous, or oh, I'm good, I do this, including when the pastor fell, when he falls. Many of them, they deviate from the way, they backslide. 
they say, the first thing they say, but I've done this. I've been so many years in the church. Uh, how, how come I have done so many things? The first thing they do is to defend themselves. And then we can already see that the person is really bad because who is righteous don't need to defend themselves. Let they accuse. Let the accusation be and wait. Hope on the Lord that called him will justify him. Remember where you've fallen. So they were fallen, but they were doing a lot of things. They had works. So, and you, you have to look for you, all of us. We speak about you, but we also included. We cannot uh, be hold, uh, held, holding, just like you hold a photograph. The, the photograph, the picture in front, it's something beautiful. But you're holding with the works behind. So just an image, we know that spiritually we are not pleasing God. We already lost the fear. See, it's okay that you may say, Bishop, but after many years in faith, some years in the work of God, we get mature, we grow, we grew. And we had many experience and we start to be experienced now. And we get mature, but understand, true maturity in faith will make it more, multiply the first love, not abandon it. But sometimes a person thinks that maturity in faith is, oh, now I become an old prophet. And they become an old prophet. I have done this, I've done that. I have done many things. And many things for them, they start to see with these eyes. This I already did many times. I don't need to do. Let the younger do this. So, this thought will make the faith of the person to get old. And they don't have the child faith anymore. Jesus said, we should have a faith like the one of the child. So, we don't enter the kingdom of heaven. So, it doesn't matter the time of the church, the time of the work of God. We must be like a child. See how do you look at things, how you treat things. Another example here, Bishop. I remember when I was an assistant, the pastors, they would speak to us many times like this. Look, you have to understand that the work of God, there's no way back. You will place your hand on the plot and you will not look back. There's no chance for you to start and leave it. It's until you die. It is your calling until the end. So I was bringing my heart a big fear. Do I see myself old serving God? Not even as a pastor, but as an assistant with a gray hair doing the work of God as an assistant. So I made this decision very conscious. The devil takes that, that before was, you know, unacceptable. Today he makes it as normal. He kept make normalize those absurd things so this points to the loss of the first love the loss the fear the sanctity the holiness for the things of god for their own salvation this is what the bishop is saying here this most important so the fear the fear for god the bible says that those who fear the lord they run they shun from evil they shun from sin when the person is not fearful to God, they allow, they make some concession for sins. Oh, this is a small thing. I do so many things. I'm. This is nothing. This is small. Understand? It's a small lie. It is a small mistake over there. And they, concessions, they make concessions. They, they allow it. So they lost the first love, for sure. So, I remember... When I would commit a sin, and you as well, you have lived this experience in the beginning. When you would commit a minimal mistake, you would soon want to fix yourself, correct yourself, correct yourself before God. You couldn't sleep with that in your conscience. So this is so certain that this angel of the church of Ephesus, he needed to convert that the text says, Let's read. He who has an ear, 
Let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. See, it's to the churches. To the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. The one who overcomes, that means, if you are an angel, and you have lost the first love, you are losing. You are not overcoming. You have been downfalling. You are coming down all the way. God gives us power to do wonderful things, but He does not exempt us from our mistakes. No. If we make mistakes, if we sin, like uh, the worst of all is. The lack of fear in the first love, if you don't have the first love, if you abandon the first love, the first thing is the fear. The fear of the Lord that the person abandons. And I, I want to pass to you what I have lived and I have been living. Of course that all of us, we make mistakes. All of us have fall, flaws. And we... We have flaws, I have no doubt, as the Lord Jesus taught us to pray, the Lord's prayer, forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors every single day. But we are here talking about the first love. This is the relationship with the Lord Jesus himself, the fear for him. In our mistakes, we commit the mistakes, oh God, have mercy on me. Because I have a fear. If the person fails, my God, forgive me. It's a conscious, fearful. They feel pain in their conscience. There's no peace because they made a mistake. So they have to fix themselves with God. So sort out with God. But keep the first love. Because the first love is the passion for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He has given us His Spirit so we can keep ourselves in the faith in Him.